Lifestyle medicine is the use of lifestyle interventions directed at the treatment, management, and prevention of disease. Hey folks, I just want to take a minute to explain trans fats and what I think you should know about them. They're one of the three major types of dietary fat that you should understand, so I'm going to take a few minutes to explain what they are and how they might influence your health. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is structure, since that is important to understand how it's different from saturated fatty acids and mono and polyunsaturated fatty acids. In this picture, you're looking at a complete trans fatty acid. The pictures are the same structure, they're just two different ways of looking at it. Fatty acids contain a long tail, which is under the blue box, and this tail is composed of carbon and hydrogen atoms. And at the head of any fatty acid is what's called the carboxyl group, which is in the green box. These carboxyl groups are the same on all fatty acids, so I'm not going to spend any other time talking about them because they don't uh, define the distinction between the different fatty acids or the different types of fat. What makes this a trans fatty acid is the carbon-carbon double bond where the red arrow is pointed. Each black line represents a bond between two atoms. So when you see two, it represents two double bonds between those two atoms. The trans fatty acid is referring to a carbon-carbon double bond, which is the red arrow, and specifically refers to the configuration of that double bond. It can bend in two different ways. One is called trans, where it bends across itself, or cis, where it bends away from itself, which is not depicted in this image. Cis generally occurs in nature, and trans is generally considered more of a manufactured product. The significance of this double bond in the trans configuration is that it allows trans fats to stack very tightly, making it harder for your body to metabolize them. One other thing I want to point out is that while trans fats are technically unsaturated, they are not the same as mono and polyunsaturated fat, and that has to do with the cis configuration of those fatty acids and is explained in a different lecture. The number of carbon atoms in the chain can vary also, which can affect how your body metabolizes the fatty acid. Some trans fatty acids occur naturally in foods, especially those of animal origin, although the majority of trans fatty acid consumption is a result of industrial hydrogenation of polyunsaturated fatty acids. And just a personal note, this should be a red flag for you. Uh, it's a pretty good rule of thumb that if it does not occur in nature, it's probably not as good for you as natural alternatives. And why do uh, companies and producers use trans fatty acids? It's because they have a tendency to have a longer shelf life and they're solid at room temperature. So they have utility in a kitchen. And here's why you should be concerned with trans fat and go out of your way to avoid them. They have many negative effects. Uh, multiple studies have shown adverse effects in diets high in trans fat. Similarly, studies have found replacing trans fat with mono and polyunsaturated fats can reverse many of these negative effects. They tend to raise LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol, and lower HDL cholesterol, which is the good one. Trans fatty acids also appear to interfere with the desaturation and elongation of omega-3 fatty acids. In other words, they can diminish the effectiveness of omega-3 fatty acids. Studies have linked trans fatty acid consumption with increased risk for coronary heart disease, myocardial infarction, or heart attacks, as well as stroke. And trans fatty acids have also been associated with an increased risk of developing diabetes. Foods uh, that commonly have them, um, margarine, any fried foods like french fries and donuts, baked goods including pastries, pie crusts, biscuits, pizza dough, cookies, crackers, and shortenings. Uh, you can identify whether the foods you're eating have trans fats by looking at the food nutrition facts label and also looking for partially hydrogenated oils in the ingredients. The American Heart Association recommends no more than 1% of your total caloric intake consists of trans fats. And in summary, the trans part of trans fat refers to the configuration of the carbon-carbon double bond in the fatty acid chain. Trans fats do not occur commonly in nature and are mostly a product of hydrogenation by the food industry. They can increase the risk of bad cholesterol, coronary heart disease, heart attacks, stroke, and diabetes. And they are most commonly found in baked and fried foods.